we asked the dark web. Was there ever a point during the dark web when you genuinely felt in danger? What happened? The online threats were funny, but when I started getting death threats by mail, I backed the duck off. I was high school for non-Americans grade 9 to 12. I was in high school and was using my home computer as an FTP server for a wares group on IRC because I convinced my dad to sign up for a 90-day free trial of this new thing called broadband. I had 3 megabytes per second down and 1.5 up. Of course, we never cancelled it. They figured out who I was by using a cute FTB vulnerability to get root directory access to my PC. The death threats were bad enough, but what really sticks with me is the malice of deleting my family photos, including the last picture, which is us with my dad while he was still alive. I was the typical invincible feeling young adult, and I was more concerned about worrying my mom than I was about my own safety. This was long before doxing was a thing, and online threats going from email to handwritten letters was terrifying, but as a high school kid, I never would have admitted it. Nobody asked, but if I was confronted in person, I would have fought back. 18 years later, if they really held a grudge and threatened me again with the same malice expressed in those letters I got, I would open the door with a gun in hand and if they tried to get in, I would assume that they were intending to kill me and shoot first. About a year ago, I moved into a nice house that Grandpa had built himself. I was in the basement one day. The door was outside the house like one of those tornado movies. Anyways, there were some plastic containers on the shelves with holes cut in them. There were four or five of these open crates and there was hay inside like there was supposed to be some kind of animal in there but with no way of keeping it there since the sides were cut out. I asked my grandpa about it. He said the previous owners were very paranoid about everything and almost never paid their rent. Behind one of the top shelf crates, there was a computer, like a full-blown $2,000 computer. I told my grandpa about the computer. He said the owner skipped town so we couldn't get their contact details to come get it. I took the computer upstairs and plugged it in just to see if it worked. It turned right on. No password. The only icon on the desktop was Tor. For those that don't know, Tor is a browser you can use to access the dark, deep web. The computer had a 4 terabyte hard drive. I took a brief look into the files. In the video files, there was this massive list of videos which isn't unusual until I saw the name of each video. It instantly sent chills throughout my body. One was named Allison, another named Tiffany, or something like that. I clicked on one of the videos hoping it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It was a 15 minute video of a black screen and no audio. Towards that point, I felt like I was being watched although there was no webcam. I don't think I'd ever want to meet the previous owners. I remember that little plastic crate along sides were cut out so maybe the previous owners slept in the crates which is eerie in itself, which would explain the hay. Just shows how paranoid the previous owners were. There are some forums on the dark web I used to participate in. At some point, I must have jokingly given my address as the address of the headquarters of a controversial political party in my country. Long enough after doing so, to have forgotten. Someone PM'd me with death threats including saying, I know where you live. I was a little bit spooked but I decided I'd ask for my address then call their bluff. The response back was something along the lines of, You think I'm messing with you? And the city and provenance where I lived. Now, I was really freaking out. How could someone know all this? But on the flip side, this is the biggest city in the country so, hand shaking. I asked for my full address. Sure enough, they gave the office address of this political party. Dude hadn't even taken 30 seconds to check whether this was a residential address. Last month, I bought a mystery box from the dark web just for fun. There were a few butter knives, an old DVD player in working condition, one doll and some other non-significant items. I threw everything away except the DVD player because I had some old CDs I wanted to check. 
I connected the DVD player to my TV and it did work. It was 11 o'clock at night. I turned off the TV in the room and went to bed. Around 2 o'clock I was woken up as I was thirsty and went to the kitchen. Along the way I passed in front of the DVD player. The room was dark and from the corner of my eye I saw a faint red light being the DVD player. I got scared as the DVD player was no longer connected to the circuit. I quickly turned on the lights and with the help of a screwdriver, opened up the DVD player. What was inside was probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me. There was a miniature camera with a little battery attached to it. I quickly removed the small battery and put the camera in a dark box. My first instinct was to call the police but I waited till morning. Next day, I took the camera to my friend's shop to check what type of camera it was and if it recorded anything. I found out the camera was not in working condition or maybe the camera broke when the product was delivered, but the camera was designed that it records videos without any voice. Up to 24 hour videos can be recorded with it and the small battery provides enough energy that it can provide the camera a life of 8 hours once turned on. With this, the camera was connected when the DVD player is connected, the camera automatically starts. This was a sick joke which failed due to how low quality of product. I was so relieved that the camera broke in the process. I called the police, documented the entire episode, and threw away the camera. I was an avid dark web user. It wasn't scary considering I knew how to make sure to stay out of trouble and keep secure. But that's only me, you see. When I was browsing the dark web, very surface level, no clue how the next part happened, I was on a simple video player that lets me watch shows that have been taken off of, say, Netflix or shows that aren't available in my country, and was asked by my parents to go get some groceries as they were cooking enchiladas. Here's when it went wrong. I turned off my monitor and made sure it was locked. I did not turn off the PC fully. I put on my shoes and went to the nearby grocery store, five minute walk, got the necessary ingredients. When I came home, I went back to my room to find my little brother who's 11 at the time, on my computer with camera on talking to some guy. He had multiple coverings on his face, some type of net like fabric and was talking via chat. I freaked out. I found out later he apparently logged onto my PC knew my password because he played Minecraft on my PC often, and clicked on a pop-up that let him hear, where he was talking to the guy. My older brother defense mode activated, I got him out of the camera, turned it off, and immediately typed in chat, we are alerting the authorities, leave immediately. I saw him typing something, his shoulders were moving about as if he was typing on the keyboard, and proceeded to start to leave. As I clicked the confirmation button to leave, I can still remember that exact moment. On the right of the word confirmation to leave, I saw the chat box and was only able to read one word before I left. Quote, address. I immediately shut off my computer and put multiple layers of black type tape over my camera. I then turned to my brother and asked why he was there and who that guy was. He started crying as I raised my voice. My mind was still panicking as I don't know how long he was on there, but eventually, my parents came and asked why he was crying. I explained the situation. I included a brief explanation of what the dark web is, and I saw their faces go white. My stomach felt like it was going to come up any second, and I just sat there for a bit wondering what to do. Eventually, I told my brother what actually happened, including how that man could have found out who we are, our names our address, etc. Me and my parents called the local authorities and they said they couldn't do much as the person was anonymous and we have no video of it. Hindsight, I should have taken a photo of the guy before leaving. They sent a patrol car to our house and asked what happened, etc. After the situation calmed a bit, we were able to convince the authorities to have a patrol car out of our house for the night. I threw out my PC after that, monitor and all and still have some anxiety about going on the internet, hence the throwaway, and have even made sure that my family's privacy comes first and foremost. I remember not sleeping that night and staying in my living room watching TV all night. 
It was probably the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced and I still have anxiety over internet usage among other things. I genuinely felt in danger and have never touched the dark web again. Year was 2011, I live in South Asian country so internet was new around there at the time and I was 15 years old. I knew about the dark net so back then mobiles were not advanced and computers are also rare but cyber cafes existed back then. For all who don't know, they were shops which rent you PC with internet connection per hour. For some time, I gathered all the information on the dark web, downloaded the Tor browser, and run some Onion sites. I did this all summer one time. I stumbled upon a site that will kill anyone you want and will take money after job is done. I thought it was fake. And sketchy. So, I order bounty on myself and I wrote, the death must look like an accident, and after proof, I will give you $600. I was employed, posted my photo also just to make sure. My dad had a 2 megapixel phone at the time. After two days, I got into a serious accident. It was very bad, broke my back, and was in the hospital for six months. The time I was very scared that some will definitely come to kill me, but that did not happen. I'm now 23 years old, and I look back. It was a dumb thing for sure, but I remember the moment in the hospital till now, and for the website, I think it was a hoax, or no one's interested in my bounty. I still don't know what happened to my photo. Okay, so, I've been genuinely scared only one time. I had been browsing deep web links till I got to a website. This website was all gore, having pictures of dead people from killings or hangings, and these photos were in decent quality, so... It was unsettling. The website at first had already taken a while to load, so I was a little suspect already, but kept scrolling through the site for a while and my phone started getting slower. So, I decided it was best I should leave the site. Upon doing so, my phone never started to speed up, so I turned my screen off and continued to play on my Xbox. After about five minutes, my phone was getting spammed with notifications, so... I turned my phone back on and went to my home screen. That's when stuff started happening. My home screen was all black instead of the background I had before. I thought that was a little weird, but also, I did not have any notifications even though I kept hearing them. At this point, I was pretty freaked out, so I turned my screen off till it lit up again due to a notification. I tried to swipe up to get my phone screen, but at this point, my phone was unresponsive. I tried swiping down to see my battery life and notifications, but I couldn't do that either. By the way, I have an Android at this point. I was really freaked out and the scariest part happened. My screen turned on and I couldn't turn it off. All that showed was my IP, home address, and me. My camera was showing me. I was basically looking at the fear on my face. I tried holding the power button to turn the phone off, but I couldn't. The only thing that fixed what happened was forcing a factory reset. Luckily, it would be hard for whoever had my info to find me. This was a month ago, and there were a lot of restrictions around travel due to COVID. But this is my scariest experience and still haven't went back to the deep web since. Okay, this is a creepy one, here it comes. When I logged into my computer, I had a weird thing going on, like the pages I enter were loading twice. I thought it was just a software thing and full recovery could solve the problems. I had bought a 2 terabyte hard drive from a different website. It was fast and good, like it was factory new. And also, it was full empty. I installed the Windows 10 right after I got it from the cargo delivery. It was the usual stuff, installing Windows 10 and then some GPU drivers and other things. A couple of days later, the websites, normal ones from the Google database, started loading twice when I visited them, like clicking the refresh button. As I said before, I thought it was a software thing. It wasn't just that. Every time when I launched my computer, I had this stupid CMD window popping up in the screen and disappearing in milliseconds. Anyways, I had started to receive some food advertisements to my phone as a message, like discounts and other stuff, but the thing is, I've never ordered a single meal from that phone. It was my second phone from my job. Later on, 
Some Indian food store owner PM'd me on Facebook about a free meal in his store and invited me to visit him in his restaurant. I told him I don't like Indian food kindly and refused his offer. Real creepy stuff started after that little conversation. Someone started to call my phone every night. I thought it was some kind of prank and I was the victim. The phone ringed about five minutes one after another and I decided to answer the call. The guy on the other line of the phone started talking about some stuff in a language I've never heard in my entire life. He was talking so fast but at the same time so quiet. Two days later I received another delivery. When I opened the box I saw an empty water bottle with a note saying, fill it with yourself and record it. By the time I read the note I received another message from the phone saying he knew everything about me and I must do whatever he or she says. I still don't know who the hell he is. I used my head and finally linked everything to each other. Found out it was the hard drive that caused all this sick shit. I smashed and threw away the hard drive after all this. The guy harassed me for days, threatening to upload my naked pictures and videos, which was bullcrap because I don't even own a webcam. How can it be possible? From my phone? It's been weeks now. I still have this weird feeling that someone's watching me. There was this onion. That was a site where you could click a button and it would take you to another random site. After clicking through for a while and mostly being taken to stupid sites, I clicked the button and was taken to a black site with a video player. The video started as my webcam from the last 30 minutes. It was not live. It was me scrolling and clicking the button. When I saw this, I freaked out, but I could not click off. I was curious. Instead, I taped over the webcam, called my brother into the room. Eventually, some carnival-type music starts playing and gets louder and more distorted as the video of me plays before abruptly stopping. Some text appeared on the screen, and I honestly don't remember much of it, as the words were only there for a second. But I remember it saying, quote, Don't check the bathroom. Repeatedly, my brother said to turn it off already, to which a voice responded, Don't leave! And it said my brother's name. I loudly assert an explicit word, and the computer spawns again with, Shush, the movie's just getting good. The video then catches up when I got onto the site. The screen went black, then a cheap jump scare of what looked like a ketchup on an Elmo toy, followed by children's laughs. <laughs> Then my computer crashed. I just want to know what that even was. I used to go on the dark web a lot when I was a young teenager. Like to browse the Silk Road with my dumb stoner friends and marvel in disbelief that something like that even existed. Also, like to download files for things like the Satanic Bible, Anarchist Cookbook, supposedly classified government leaks, things like that. One time, I stumbled upon a link for cheese pizza. While on some sort of dark web directory, I remember it looked like a wiki page, but it was like a deep web wiki page. It had a bullet pointed list leading to different dark web sites like Hitman, drug dealing markets, etc. So I remember thinking WTF for pizza recipes doing on the dark web. That seems really innocent compared to everything else on the list, mind you. This was 2011, maybe 2010, and I was a 15-year-old girl myself. This happened during my first semester of high school. I have never heard of what cheese pizza was code for or how the duck would I have. Anyways, I opened the file. It did not require a download. It was a link that led to a web page. If it had required a download, I legit would have smashed my computer. That page was open to my computer for less than 10 seconds. I saw a few photos, luckily no videos, and I've never felt so horrified and endangered in my life. I immediately exited out a tour, uninstalled it, and never looked back. To this day, I refuse to re-download it, even though the dark web still fascinates me. I never want to see media like that ever again. Those images are forever seared into my mind, oh god. Typing this story makes me feel violently ill. Be careful what you click on if you're browsing Tor. Thank you for listening to these dark web stories. 
If any of these stories creeped you out, go ahead and press the subscribe button. Midnight Monster will always deliver a spine-tingling, skin-crawling moment, so stick around. We have a lot of scares coming.